Now at 10, ABC4 celebrating 75 years as Utah's first television station. In 1948, the station lit up TV sets across Salt Lake City. More from colleagues past and present, and a special declaration from Governor Cox. Plus, a package thief hitting multiple homes in Utah County. One of the victims sharing her story with us, saying she wants the man responsible brought to justice. And I know, I know two or three hit men that were very quiet guys. Four local officials in a small town in Oklahoma accused of making racist remarks on audio and allegedly threatening to kill a journalist. More on the recordings and the fallout. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us. A gathering of friends and colleagues here at the station tonight as we celebrate 75 years of ABC4. Governor Cox giving us a very special message, declaring April 19th of 2023 as Good for Utah Day. While the governor couldn't join us tonight, his senior advisor, Jennifer Napier Pierce, was here to read the declaration, sharing kind words about the many generations that have made our station what it is today. Whereas ABC4 has been a dependable source of information for Utah's communities, whereas ABC4 is a trusted leader in our community, providing timely and significant news stories, and whereas ABC4 has been a pioneer in Utah's broadcasting industry and a strong contributor to our state. Now, therefore, I, Spencer J. Cox, Stand in, Jennifer Napier Pierce, governor of the state of Utah, do hereby declare April 19th, 2023, as Good for Utah Day in Utah. Congratulations, everyone. That applause continues. We want to thank our guests who attended tonight and also a thank you to all of you, our viewers, for continuing to tune in and supporting us here at ABC4. What a night mm -hmm. it was. So much fun celebrating this major milestone. Tonight, we are hearing from some of the people who laid the foundation for ABC4. Yes, ABC4's Courtney Johns joining us live in the newsroom with some of the memories made here at ABC4. Courtney. Yeah, Emily, it is incredible to see how many people came out tonight and just listening to people share their stories, talking about what has changed over this time and what they see for the future of journalism, as well as what they remember most about working here at ABC4. That's something new is ABC. 75 years of television. It was a huge part of my life. This was where I really kind of came into my own, was at Channel 4. And I'm forever grateful to whoever let me do that. Countless memories. I remember one time when the key just about blew off and we were trying to hold on to it. And I had to yell to him to grab one end while I held on to the other. So we've had some fun experiences. I went into labor on air and we went into break and I had to say, I, I, I don't, I think I have to go home. I conquered my fears on that day and a bond that can never be broken. You're talking to people right behind the camera. They're your friends, they're your trusted people to, to have your back. The mission started 75 years ago. A brand new TV network is born. That Founded on a core belief. Journalism is the only career protected by the Constitution, and it does attract people who truly believe in what they're doing. I'm, I'm always hopeful for journalism. I mean, that's that's what keeps this country going is, you know, journalists who are willing to dig and and uh, tell truth to power. And that's what makes the country tick. That our community can achieve anything today. Singing praises of ABC. And in the years to come. We're here to celebrate as one good for Utah family. So much to celebrate there. And we also asked them what they saw for the future of journalism. A lot of people talking about how much has changed over that time and really saying it's anyone's guess what we'll see in the next 20 years. But everyone did agree there will always be a place for journalism in our community. Back to you. Yeah, that's really something to think about when you think about how much has yeah. changed in just the last 20 years, where it's going to go in the next 20. 
Yeah, Hold time on will for tell. The Who knows? Right, yeah. right. Indeed. All right, now on to some other news tonight. Uh, two geologists from the Utah Geological Survey, to be exact, actively monitoring 100 landslide areas across Utah. This spring, they've added a handful of new areas to that list and expect to see even more. ABC 4's Kate Garner was in North Salt Lake today. We'll send it to Kate. Geologists have been measuring the slow-moving Spring Hill Slide in North Salt Lake since 1998. You can see them continuing that work today in this video. The slide is more than 700 feet long and 300 feet wide, and is responsible for the demolition of more than a dozen homes in the area. The Utah Geological Survey continues to monitor slide areas, create up-to-date maps, and share that information with lawmakers, who will hopefully prevent development in high danger zones. What's happening now is that we, we hope our engineering is better, but we, our urban sprawl has pushed us into areas where we weren't built before. Kate Gardner reporting for us tonight. The geologists who are already monitoring a handful of landslides across the state say some of them have endangered homes. All right, let's head over for a check of the forecast with meteorologist Nate Larson in tonight for Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. And as we celebrate 75 years today, Nate, it was a little bit cooler outside. <laughs> it was kind of nice to have things indoors, I would imagine, where mm -hmm. it's a little warmer. For sure. Temperatures have been trending a good 10, 15 degrees cooler than normal with the northwest flow that we have had. Skies have cleared out. It's a beautiful evening uh, looking over Park City Mountain. You can see all the stars that are out, uh, the clear skies. Now, these clear skies with our cool air that's already in place, yeah, you can bet temperatures are are going to plummet tonight. In fact, uh, we do have freeze warnings for portions of Utah. Water vapor imagery. This is a good way to see where the cloud cover and the moisture is. Uh, fairly quiet conditions uh, off to the northwest of us, but there's just enough moisture. We could squeeze out a few showers across northern Utah, clear across the southern part of the state. We are tracking additional showers, though. Maybe some thunderstorms in the mix, uh, even for your Thursday. We'll kind of time out when we expect to see that. But again, with these clear skies, the main culprit is going to be a hard freeze warning for uh, portions of east of San Rafael Swell. Southeastern Utah could see temperatures down to as low as 26 degrees. So if there's already vegetation and things outside that needs to, of course, be covered up, taken care of. It could even cause some damage to exposed pipes with how cold temperatures are going to get. Future cast showing a little bit of moisture moving into the area tonight could generate a few snowflakes over the mountain areas. The temperatures are cold enough. We could even see a little bit of lake enhanced moisture into tomorrow morning. So lake effect can't rule that out. Over some of the uh, valley locations as well, we have a chance of rain snow showers into Thursday with continued moisture. So tonight's forecast, 33 for Salt Lake City, 40 for St. George. Plan on mostly cloudy skies up north while we'll clear down, or down south. And we do have a slight chance of a few rain snow showers in the mix as well. Guys. All right, thank you so much. Well, a man buried by a roof avalanche up at Brighton has passed away, we're told. Unified Police saying 50-year-old Ryan Peterson of Holiday had gone to his cabin in the town of Brighton on Monday, but no one had heard from him since. Police say they found him outside of the cabin buried by a roof avalanche, apparently trying to clear snow from the roof. Officers dug him out but say he died at the scene. High winds diverting more than a dozen planes to Salt Lake City International Airport today. The flight's initially heading to Colorado. Airport officials saying high winds were just too dangerous for the planes to land there. The planes then being diverted to Utah, including an international flight from Frankfurt, Germany, and a plane that departed from Austin, Texas. Now, a statement from Salt Lake City International Airport confirming three international flights diverted and 11 domestic. Two of those international flights successfully making it to Denver tonight. And it's warming up outside, which means more time in the park and going on hikes, but it also means construction season. And today, UDOT announced some major projects for Salt Lake County. They're expanding Redwood Road near 6200 South and putting in new ramps, I-215 there. They're also putting some new bridges on Bangor Highway. And while it can be annoying to commute around construction, of course, UDOT is asking people to please drive safely and be so aware of workers around. Treat the workers of the work zones like they're a loved one of their own family. Don't drive distracted and let's have everybody go home safely at night. UDOT has already started working on some bigger projects this year, like I-80 in Salt Lake City, but there are lots of smaller ones, too. Overall, they'll be doing 220 this year, which is about $3.2 billion worth in value. New at 10, just about anything can be at your doorstep in a matter of hours, especially with services like Amazon Prime's overnight delivery. But that ease and convenience 
can become a headache when your delivery is nowhere in sight and has been stolen right off of your doorstep. It's exactly what happened to Bluffdale resident Brooke Jones. Her package theft, though inexpensive, left her feeling frustrated. That's just not the way. You, you, just because you go to a more affluent city, that doesn't mean that the people who live there can't afford to give you whatever's on the porch. You don't know what it is. It could be some family heirloom. The people inside the house could be ready to foreclose. You don't know, and it's not up to you or your right to go up to someone's house and decide that your need is better. All right, she's sharing her story and hope it will encourage neighbors and communities to be vigilant in looking out for those porch pirates. You can check the website neighbors.ring to check out footage and even upload your own. Okay, coming up, a temporary extension on access to the abortion drug today. More on the Supreme Court's decision. And what an Oklahoma sheriff's office is saying about a recording in which the sheriff and others allegedly discussed killing a journalist and making racist remarks. And portions of Utah have risks for thunderstorms. We'll talk about timing when we could expect to see some in the northeast part of the state, including the Wasatch Front. Details.